YouTube, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Today, we're going to be talking about the dangers and due process violations of gender affirming care. We're going to go two sides of a two sides of the um, argument, and I think you guys will love to hear this. I'm going to let them speak out in entirety, and I'll give my opinion afterwards. Ms. Cole, um, you're next, and you can begin. Good morning. My name is Chloe Cole, and I am a detransitioner. Another way to put that would be. I used to believe that I was born in the wrong body, and the adults in my life, whom I trusted, affirmed my belief, and this caused me lifelong irreversible harm. I speak to you today as a victim of one of the biggest medical scandals in the history of the United States of America. I speak to you in the hope that you will have the courage to bring the scandal to an end and ensure that other vulnerable teenagers, children, and young adults don't go through what I went through. At the age of 12, I began to experience what my medical team would later diagnose as gender dysphoria. I was well into an early puberty, and I was very uncomfortable with the changes that were happening to my body. I was, intimida I was intimidated by male attention, and when I told my parents that I felt like a boy, in retrospect, all I meant was that I hated puberty, that I wanted this newfound sexual attention to go away, that I looked up to my brothers a little bit more than I did to my sisters. I came out as transgender in a letter I sent on the dining room table. My parents were immediately concerned. They felt like they needed to get outside help from medical professionals, but this proved to be a mistake. It immediately set our entire family down a path of ideologically motivated deceit and coercion. The gender specialist I was taken to, taken to see told my parents that I needed to be put on puberty blocking drugs right away. They asked my parents a simple question. Would you rather have a dead daughter for a living transgender son. The choice was enough for my parents to let their guard down, and in retrospect, I can't blame them. This is the moment that we all became victims of so-called gender-affirming care. I was fast-tracked onto puberty blockers and then testosterone. The resulting menopausal-like hot flashes made focusing on school impossible. I still get joint pains and weird pops in my back, but they were far worse when I was on the blockers. A month later, when I was 13, I had my first testosterone injection. This caused permanent changes to my body. My voice will forever be deeper, my jawline sharper, my nose longer, my bone structure um, permanently masculinized, my Adam's apple more prominent, my fertility unknown. I look in the mirror sometimes and I feel like a monster. I had a double mastectomy at 15. They tested my amputated breast for cancer and I was cancer-free, of course. I was perfectly healthy. There was nothing wrong with my still-developing body or my breasts other than that as an insecure teenage girl. I felt awkward about it. After my breasts were taken away from me, the tissue was incinerated. Before I was able to legally drive, I had, part, I had a huge part of my future womanhood taken from me. I will never be able to breastfeed. I struggle to look at myself in the mirror at times. I, I, still, I still struggle to this day with sexual dysfunction. And I have massive scars across my chest. And the skin grafts that they use, that they took of my nipples, are weeping fluid today. And they were grafted into a more masculine positioning, they said. After surgery, my grades in school plummeted. Everything that I went through did nothing to address my underlying mental health issues that I had. And my doctors, with their theories on gender, thought that all my problems would go away as soon as I was surgically transformed into something that vaguely resembled a boy. Their theories were wrong. The drugs and surgeries changed my body, but they did not and could not change the basic reality that I am and forever will be a female. When my specialist first told my parents that they could have a dead daughter or a live transgender son, I wasn't suicidal. I was a happy child who struggled because she was different. However, at 16, after my surgery, I did become suicidal. I'm doing better now. But my parents almost got the dead daughter promised to them by my doctors. My doctors had almost created the very nightmare they said they were trying to avoid. So what message do I want to bring to American teenagers and their families? I didn't need to be lied to. I needed compassion. I needed to be loved. I needed to be given therapy to help me work through my issues, not affirm to my delusion that by transforming into a boy, it would solve all my problems. We need to stop telling 12-year-olds that they're born wrong, that they are right to reject their own bodies and feel uncomfortable with their own skin. 
We need to stop telling children that puberty is an option, that they can choose what kind of puberty they will go through, just so they can choose what clothes to wear or what music to listen to. Puberty is a rite of passage to adulthood, not a disease to be mitigated. Today, I should be at home with my family celebrating my 19th birthday, and instead I'm making a desperate plea to my elected, re my elected representatives. Learn the lessons from other medical scandals like the opioid crisis to recognize that doctors are human too, and sometimes they are wrong. My childhood was ruined along with thousands of detransitioners that I know through our networks. This needs to stop. You alone can stop it. Enough children have already been victimized by this barbaric pseudoscience. Please let me be your final warning. Thank you. Today's your birthday? It is. You're a beautiful, brave woman. Thank you for being here. Okay, so based on this first one, um, listen, I totally agree that it's just too much going on when we have, we keep telling 12-year-olds that they're not in the right body because I want y'all to understand that there is going to come times that kids are going to not feel comfortable in their body. They're not going to want to go through puberty. They're not going to want to go through these things. Heck, I didn't even like going through puberty that much. But at the same time, I be, at the same time, I'm glad my parents were just like, well, do you want to be a girl or do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And I always hear this uh, thing that says, oh, I'm so afraid of what my kid might do to themselves, all that stuff. But you are the parent at the end of the day. All you can do is do the counseling. I'm sorry to say this, but at the end of the day, there's only so much you can do as a parent. If a child decides to possibly go through with that, you can only do the best you can. But I think it is not right to take a kid and take their bodies and take it through this surgery and all this stuff that they may not be able to do. You heard this young lady talk about how she can't breastfeed. She's probably going to be infertile. Her sex functions aren't even the same now. So what's the point? So what's the point of saying, you know what, we're going to take you all the way through all of this as a child. So maybe it'll be a life saving. But what if it's not? What if at one point their mind changes? Because that does happen with children. When left alone, they tend to make their own decisions and they tend to just say, you know what? No, I don't want the surgery. I don't want the puberty blockers. I'm just going to go through life like this. Because what people don't understand is that these are children, right? They have never been through puberty. So you're already making it seem like puberty is a terrible thing, like they should be scared of it. Even though a child has never been through it, at least let them get through the puberty and get through that part of life before you take that right away from them. Because you're assuming that for some reason they have a right to be scared of puberty, but you don't know that because, listen, there are things that kids have obviously never experienced in this life. So to assume that they have all this knowledge of how bad puberty is and all this, all this stuff, and that they need to stop it, that doesn't make any sense. Of course, a child is going to be scared if they've never been through something we all have in life. We all knew that one day we were going to turn 18. One day we we're going to have to move out of our parents' house. One day we we're going to have to get a job, stop paying bills, and then come with the crushing pressure that can be of having a parent. It's the same thing with having a child, period. Nobody knows what it's like to have a child until they have a child. Nobody knows a lot of things until it happens. So to stop a kid from even getting to experience that makes no sense. To stop them from even being able to have kids or be able to live a life as a normal human being, you take that right from them just because they may be scared of it, because they've seen something on the internet you teach them that this is a part of life you don't tell them this is something you should be scared of let's just take that into consideration okay we're going to move on to the other side of the argument for mrs reynolds thank you uh, miss reynolds you're next you may begin good morning my name is miriam reynolds i'm a licensed professional counselor a fifth generation texan descending from a long line of conservative christians and i'm the mother of a transgender son I am honored to be here today to give my testimony and tell you the story of my incredible child. He recently became an adult and I will still refer to him as a child. His name is Cameron and he is 18 years old. He recently graduated from high school and is embarking on, embarking on adulthood with a gap year before college. Cameron told us he was transgender when he was 11 years old. He was clearly dealing with something, but we didn't know what it was or how to help him. But then he told us. My husband and I had the same instinct to tell him that we love him no matter what and always will be there for him. We, needed, <clears throat> we knew we needed to affirm him from our years in working with foster youth, but we had no idea what to do next. We were scared. We didn't know anyone who had a trans child. We had never even heard of gender affirming care. I prayed that it was a phase, but already knew that it wasn't. The signs had been there all along. We just didn't understand them. We thought he was a tomboy. He refused to wear anything pink or girly and was the only girl on the boys' football team for many years. His best friends were always boys. 
there were a lot of signs looking back. As parents, all we really want for our children is for them to be happy and healthy. Prior to receiving gender-affirming care and socially transitioning, my child was not happy and was not able to be his true self. I didn't want him to have to face the struggles of being transgender, but I did want him to be happy and himself. At times, I grieved my little girl and felt as if she were gone. It was hard on me at first, but I was able to put my child's needs before my feelings and find him the care he needed. I could see that my child was happier and felt more and more comfortable the more he was affirmed. We were living in Colorado at the time, and through some research found a comprehensive program at a local hospital that provided health care to trans kids. We found him a counselor immediately began trying to provide him <clears throat> with the best health care we could find. We felt very fortunate to have access to a multidisciplinary team of professionals who could help us figure out what options we had for Cameron's health care. I could not imagine having to manage legal restrictions of medical care in addition to talking to our extended family, all while learning ourselves about treatment options and caring for our child. Later that year, we decided to move to Texas. We began researching leading programs in the field of trans health care and were able to find a similar program. We chose to move to a town based on proximity to the clinic. We knew we needed the support of experts. We had an appointment scheduled before we even arrived in Texas or had any idea of our health insurance coverage. <clears throat> our multidisciplinary team at the clinic consisted of physicians, nurses, social workers, psychologists, medical students, my son's counselor, the school counselor, my husband and I as parents, decision makers, and my son as a patient. We filled out many, many surveys and questionnaires. Myself, Cameron, and his dad were all required to do so. We had extensive interviews with social workers and psychologists who had requested a letter from Cameron's previous provider prior to our first appointment. The intake process was lengthy and meticulous. The process was daunting, but I was grateful that the team was so thorough. I wanted, I want to make it clear that the care we received was slow, very thoughtful, provided with the utmost care and consideration. There was no rush, absolutely no coercion, lots and lots of double checking and making sure we were all on the same page. At the time, Cameron felt it was all moving too slowly. In retrospect, I, we can see clearly that it was the best thing for us to move so slowly on medical interventions so we could properly weigh the pros and cons. My son was asked at every appointment if he wanted to stop treatment or if he had any concerns about treatment whatsoever. Counseling was taking place the entire time. The Cameron's counselor would also meet with the doctor and my husband and I before medical interventions were decided upon. The interventions my son has had with extreme consideration, consent, and discussion have been counseling first and foremost, puberty blockers, and home run therapy. We have not even considered any kind of surgery and my child is 18. If any physician or member of the treatment team had suggested surgery to us when Cameron was a child, we would have said no thank you and immediately gotten a second or third opinion. With the benefit of hindsight, I have no doubt that the health care my son accessed was life-saving. I'm grateful that we have had access to this incredibly crucial, medically necessary health care for our son without the interference of our government. Cameron is thriving now. He's doing better than he ever has. He has wonderful friends. He's dating a little. He has spoken out publicly and has the love and support of his whole family, including two grandparents who are staunch conservative Christian Republicans. We can all see that this is who he is. The grandparents don't fully understand what being transgender really means, but they love and accept him. I'm asking you today to please allow parents the right to access and consent for health care for their children. This decision should be made with parents, the child, and the child's medical providers without government interference. Thank you. Thank you. So one of the things I wanted to say that started this whole thing off was that the little, the young man uh, didn't want to, yeah, the girl didn't want to wear anything girly, right? Pink, a dress. She was the only girl on the football team. A lot of her friends were boys. Y'all, and then she went on to say that, yeah, I thought she was a tomboy. But that was clearly not the answer. This kid was 11 years old when this all started. I want y'all to remember something. Once again, I have to do the same argument. When you are asking a child that they want to go with, through with something, they don't really have the neurological and intellectual ability to make such life-changing decisions because they have no idea what the consequences of that may be. You are so easy to say that at every turn we asked him if he wanted to stop. I mean, asked her if she wanted to stop. Of course, she's not going to know 
because she's already going through this. You're literally giving her puberty blockers and you're saying that you're going through all this counseling. At this point, they have no discern. They, they cannot discern between life changing and am I just going through a phase? Because the reason we say that stuff and when people say, well, I can understand if you're an adult. OK, if you're 27. OK, I get it. Maybe it's not a phase. Right. When you start making these kind of decisions, I would still disagree with it, but I could understand a little bit more. But we understand that teenagers do go through phases as we all have. If we all were the same exact person and we were as teenagers, our lives would look completely different. If I was the same person I was as a teenager today. Right. I would always be probably be an emo goth kid. Because I even went through an emo goth stage in my life. I went through this wearing all black, listening to Screamo, all this stuff, because I thought that's what my life was. And I, I love pain and all this kind of stuff. But after a while, I changed. Life got better. Things were different. It's just crazy because we're all going through stuff. We all go through different high schools, different environments. We deal with different friends. And that all influences us in high school. It's not until we normally get out of that environment and we get a chance to become our true selves that we can obviously start looking into this stuff. My issue with all that is... My issue with what she was saying is that now he's thriving. I mean, now that she's thriving and she's living life to the fullest because she's gone through these puberty blockers and all this stuff. And we stopped everything at surgery. You got to understand surgery isn't the only thing that should stop. OK, we are against puberty blockers as well, because that stuff can change you very much so stopping puberty it can make it to where you can be not have children it can make it to where you experience life completely different where you're on this hrt and all these things so that is also an issue just because you don't like pink and just because you don't want to wear dresses or wear girly things does not mean that you should have to transition into a completely different sex you y'all always talk about it as if that is a true accepting and loving thing to do when i don't believe it is just let the child go through it. Just let the child go through life. And let's see what happens. Let's see what, what happens at 18. Because she also mentioned that beautiful word that everybody wants to mention that the young lady before Miss um, Miss Chloe mentioned. The same thing of life saving. She was, she, her doctors had told her, do you want a live daughter or a dead, or do you want a live son or a dead daughter? Same thing this lady just said. She believes it was life saving. She never mentioned that the boy was even having suicidal thoughts. And Miss Chloe said the same thing. She was not having suicidal thoughts. So why do we keep bringing that up as some kind of leverage to put this stuff on children? I, and even when she said, oh, uh, we would have been very quick to move our kid off of this thing if they had even mentioned surgery. I, I do have a hard time believing that because you were so quick to do everything else. You said it was a slow process. I don't believe so. Because you were quick at 11 to get everything cranking. You moved in everything. And at any, you said at any point if the child had to change their mind, it doesn't matter. You should have been the adult in the room. What is going on today with adults being adults? Kids do not run anything. Okay? We are supposed to protect kids from themselves. The, the moment we start letting kids make their own decisions, we know that can run into terrible and dangerous situations because we are the adults. I told you guys this before, and this is going off a little bit on a tangent, but stick with me. Today, a lot of us adults would like to stay children. We act like kids until we're 35, 36, 37. We go out to clubs, we party, we drink, we get high. We act like a child almost as long as possible as if we don't want to have the responsibilities of an adult. So when kids come to us with serious stuff, we tend to brush it off. We tend to say, oh, yeah, you should do whatever you want. Go live free. You want to be a boy? You want to be a girl? Do those things. Be free instead of taking responsibility because adults are so scared to take responsibility that if we tell this child they can't do this, that this child will hate us or this child will do this to themselves or this stuff will happen. We do our best to protect them. But you're being foolish that if you think you give a kid everything they want or everything they everything they everything they believe they should have. That will give them full happiness. And we all know that is not the truth. You can protect children and have them hate you. You can protect children and uh, um, and know that there can be uh, something that can come out of that. It's okay. It happens. I'm not going to tell my kid to go do drugs and go do heroin because they believe if they don't do it, they'll have to take their lives because they're going through a mental illness. They're mentally struggling. It is a tough thing being a parent. It is tough being an adult when you have to make these decisions for these kids that you know can help them in the long run. Now, when this young man, uh, this young woman turns 18 and they decide they want to go do what they got to do, 
that's okay. All we can do is continue to talk with them. I still don't think it's right, but there's nothing we can really do when somebody wants to make a decision as an adult. Their consequences are their consequences. But when a child is a child, we need to stick with that. Be the adult in the room and start taking responsibility for what happened to these kids. Because really what happened at the end of the day is you let this kid go through puberty blockers and all this. You say they're having a great life and all this good stuff. But now you, you let go of the reins and you let them do whatever they want to. And now you can feel some well good in your conscience or something because your Christian grandparents or your Christian parents can say, oh, it's all good. And you as a Christian conservative can also say the same thing. You just don't want to have the responsibility. You just want to let this all out of your mind and let it go. I understand it's a hard decision, but it's for you to clear your conscience. It doesn't sound like you really cared about the kid because at the end of the day, you let them do whatever they wanted to, knowing that it's going to have irreversible effects for the rest of their life. And if this kid ever decides to go back and they start to say hey i hate it by my mom because she did this and let me go through all this what are you going to say then oh well at the time we thought this no you should have just said you know you're going to do what you're going to do until you turn 18 and then that's when you can do whatever you want to but until then we're going to love on you we're going to care for you we're going to do our best to let you go through whatever phase you want to go through but we're not going to give you any medications you can do all this other stuff but it is what it is she could have lived her life just fine and she dressed like a boy every single day but because she was scared to go through puberty and because she thought it was going to be tough because she didn't want to be different from her guy friends, you decided to give her irreversible stuff. No, let her go through life as a tomboy and then we'll see what happens later on in life. And then they can make that decision. Start loving your children. Start being there for your children. And let's start making a, des a decision that we know can truly help them because this kind of stuff always hurts them as we saw with Miss Chloe. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm out of here. Goodbye.